Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Hire Week 7 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been taking my mixed GCSE uh, Hire revision quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website, and I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions, and they're the three questions you can see on the screen in front of you now. But they're not just any old three questions. Oh, no, no. These are the three worst answered questions from that particular quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So first off, can you get each of these questions correct? And that's going to be easier said than done. Now, thousands of students are struggling with these. Um, second challenge is, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then, can you predict for each of these questions what the most popular choice of wrong answer is? And then I wonder, can you explain why other students may have chosen each of these popular wrong answers? And then possibly the hardest challenge of them all. Imagine you're sat next to somebody who's convinced that their wrong answer is right. How would you convince them not only that you're right, but in a nice way, of course, that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video, you work your way through these three questions, bearing these five challenges in mind. And then when you're ready, press play and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, right, let's go through these. And to build up drama, I'm gonna start with the least worst answered question first. And it is this question here. What should replace the star? So we've got some brackets here. And it's to the power of three, flipping heck. Right, so whenever we've got brackets and powers, um, I always advise my students to write it out in full. So instead of writing x to the x, take one to the power of three, we'll write out what that actually means. And it means that. Um, x, take one, all to the power of three. Now, I always say, don't try and do this all in one go. Treat, let's deal with these first. Let's multiply out these two brackets together first, get an answer, and then multiply that answer by x minus one. Otherwise, we end up with too many terms and we miscount things and so on and so forth. So let's deal with this first. Let's deal with x take one multiplied by x take one. Let's deal with this. So we get our x multiplied by our x, which gives us x squared. We get x multiplied by negative 1, which is negative x. We get negative 1 multiplied by x, which is another negative x. And we get negative 1 multiplied by negative 1, which gives us positive 1. Don't fall into that trap. And let's tidy this up a little bit. We've got just 1x squared, but then we've got a negative x. Subtract another x, so we get negative 2x's. And we've still got our positive 1 plus 1. So let's now replace this bracket with this uh, this expression here. So we have x squared take 2x plus 1. That was our big thing in this bracket. And what we've got to do now is multiply that by x take 1. So still a fair bit of work to do. I'm going to do each term by this x. So I'm going to say x squared multiplied by this x gives me x cubed. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to move along now. I'm going to say net negative 2x multiplied by that x gives me negative 2x squared. And I'm going to say 1 multiplied by that x gives me 1x. And then I'm going to move along and sort them all out with this negative 1. So I'm going to say x squared multiplied by this negative 1 gives me negative x squared. I'm going to say negative 2x multiplied by negative 1 gives me positive 2x. Be careful, negative multiplied by negative is a positive. And I'm going to say positive 1 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 1. So just check each of those because it's very easy to make a sign error in there. And let's tidy this up as well. I've only got my 1x cubed, but I've got some x squared to go in here. I've got negative 2x squared. Take off another x squared gives me negative 3x squared. Now that's good news, look at that. In our answer there, it was negative three x squared, so that's looking good. I've got positive x plus two x, which gives me plus three x's, and I'm left with a negative one, which matches up there. So I've got the term that I needed here, uh, underneath that star, I think is plus three x's, which I think is a. Um, so let's see if we're right. Yes, we are, but only 38% of students agree with us. And that's no surprise. When you compare with the amount of working we had to do there, it's quite easy to see how a little slip could lead you to either make a sign error, get negative three X's, or to lose a few X's along the way and end up with negative X. And indeed, you see students who have tried to go for kind of quick ways of doing it. Uh, you times negative one three times to get negative three X. So what they've done, they've not, they've not written it out like we did. They've tried to take a shortcut and say, You've got negative 1 multiplied uh, 3 times because it's to the power of 3 and you get negative 3x. 
I would always advise write it out. Don't try and take shortcuts with these with these powers um, in brackets. And you also get some students saying it's negative x. And that student's had a go. They've set everything out. But somewhere in there is a little slip that's led them to, uh, to make a sign error and lose a couple of x's. I'll leave you if you want to investigate exactly where that student's gone wrong. It's quite interesting. And see if you can think how you would help them fix it. Meanwhile, let's press on with the second least worst answered question. And it is this one on Venn diagrams. So pupils in a class are asked if they like apples and bananas. The results are shown in the Venn diagram. A pupil is selected at random. What is the probability they like apples given that they like bananas? That is the key to this, this given that. We know they like bananas. In other words, we know that they live in this banana circle here because we're told that they like bananas. Forget about, they can't be these five, because they don't like bananas. They can't be these eight, they don't like bananas. It's got to be chosen from this banana circle. So it's either these two, or it's these four. They're the only people we're interested in, because um, we're told that they like bananas. So what's the probability that they like apples? Well, out of these six, these four and these two, which are the ones who like apples? Well, it's these ones here, the ones in the intersecting circle, these ones. So. There are six people in total that we're bothered about, the ones who like bananas, and out of those six, two of them like apples. So I think the answer to this one is two out of six. Now that's quite quick to do. There wasn't a load of work in like the previous question, but it's that intuition, it's that knowledge of knowing exactly what the question's asking. So that's the right answer, but only 36% of students got it. By far the most popular wrong answer was A, with 42% of students going for two out of 19. Where's two out of 19 come from? Well, we can see where the two comes from. That's right, the two people who like apples and bananas. But the 19, well, that's all of these numbers added together. Five plus two plus four plus eight. That's all of those added together is gonna to give you 19. But that's like saying, what is the, what, what question that, sorry, that is the answer to a different question. That's the answer to the question. If a student's chosen at random, what's the probability they like apples and bananas? But that's not what the question's asked. We are told that they like bananas, so that's why our denominator has to be six instead of 19. Tricky question, and indeed, if we read some of those uh, those answers of students, why they've got it right, uh, you can see um, there are only two, two students that enjoy a good apple and banana at the same time. But that's not what the question's asking. It's telling us that they like bananas. Which brings us to the worst answered question out of all of these, and it's this question here on surface area and on air. Uh, at lengths. So this is all to do with length scale factors, area scale factors, and volume scale factors. So let's have a look what we're, what we're told and see if we can figure it out. So a good way to set this out is let's imagine we're dealing with, uh, let's call it a shape one, and let's call it shape two, and let's deal with lengths, and let's deal with area, because that's what we're interested in. So uh, we know that the surface area, let's call this one shape one, the surface area of shape one is 40 centimeters squared and the total length of its edges is 80 centimeters. Um, we have another shape, a similar shape, that has a surface area of 80 centimeters squared, and the challenge that we've got is to work out the length of its edges. Now, the temptation, of course, and it's screaming out at us here, is to say, well, look what's happened here. You double 40 to get to 80, so we double 80 to get to 160. But length, length uh, and areas, the, the relationship between the two doesn't quite work like that. So if we know the, uh, sorry, if we know the length scale factor, let's say it's, let's just call it, I don't know, P for argument's sake, then the area scale factor, so how much bigger the areas get, isn't P, it's not the same as that, it's P squared. A good way to understand why that is, is if you think about a rectangle, and let's say that that's four centimeters and that's two centimeters. The area of that is eight centimeters squared. If you double both the lengths, so you get a bigger rectangle, you don't end up doubling the area. So if the lengths double to eight centimeters and four centimeters, the air, the, sorry, the area doesn't double. Eight times four is 32 centimeters squared. The area goes up by a factor of four or a factor of two squared. So once we're armed with that information, this isn't too bad. What is our area scale factor? So to go from um, that shape to that shape, we've multiplied by two. So our area scale factor in this case is two. So our length scale factor, 
Well, to get from our area scale factor to our length scale factor, we need the square root. To get from p squared to p, we square root it. So we're going to do the square root. So the length scale factor must be the square root of 2. So to get from that shape to that shape, instead of times in by 2, we're going to multiply by the square root of 2, which I'm just going to write as 80 square root 2, which is option C. Now, again, it's it doesn't take that long to do that question, um, but... I don't like remembering a lot of rules in maths. I don't want to remember that the length scale factor and the relationship to the area scale factor and so on. I like to be able to try and deduce it if possible by doing little simple examples like the rectangle there, which will help me with more complicated examples. But the key thing to remember here is the relationship between length scale factors and area scale factors isn't a one-to-one -one relationship. The area scale factor is the length scale factor squared. So I'm claiming the correct answer is C, but look at that, only 28% of uh, students agree with me there. Again, no surprise there, perhaps. It's a, it's a real challenging question, that one. 40% of students have gone for an answer of B there for that one. 40% of students, and we can see where they've gone for. They've doubled it. Simple as that. We've, we've seen it there. And um, some students have gone for A. Um, that A is an interesting one. They've got the idea that it's not that one-to-one -one relationship, but they've gone the wrong way. They've got the length, the area scale factor is two, and they've squared it instead of square rooting it to get the length scale factor. Whoo, how did you get on with those three questions? Three tricky questions. Don't worry if you struggle with them. We've seen thousands of students struggle with these all around the country. But by confronting them and discussing them, hopefully we can get our heads around them. Um, if you're a student and you want more of those, if you go to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, there's 20 of those for you to play around with. And if you're a teacher and you want to set your students up on these so that you can set them as quizzes and it'll be marked for, for you automatically and you'll get sent reports, it's all completely free. Go to ed.co.uk to sign up for the revision schemes of work or drop us an email at hello at ed.co.uk and we can help you get your kids on the system. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.